Hi guys, Nick from Hi-Fi Collective here. Um, today we're going to be opening up the Ellikit TU8100. So this is kind of their budget valve amp. It's stereo, it's two watts per channel, which isn't a lot, but you know, if you've got some high sensitivity speakers, it'll be great. But and the key thing about this is that it's 235 pounds plus fat. So it's a really, really good kit to get your hands into a kit and start soldering. Um, it features a PCL86 valve, which is uh, a Mullard valve designed by them. And it was used as um, the, amp the sound music stage for TVs. So the amplifier valve. Um, let's show you, see what she's looking like inside. So this looks like Airfix, but it's not. I think it's to do with um, the tube cooler cover of the tube so that'll be interesting instructions in japanese don't worry folks you're going to get a pdf of the instructions in english so don't really need those pcb clearly labeled as per early kit everything is really really clear with their stuff so it looks like it's um breaks down into three, three or four. Bag of goodies, electronic components and connectors, feet. There's a chip there, some ribbon cable, valve bases, a little transformer. Oh, and a match pair, brilliant. Look at that puppy. These look to be the transformers, the outputs. So here's your power supply. And then there's your chassis. So quite a little cutie. But here we have the instructions for our Ellie kit. Their instructions are superb. First part of it is the PCB assembly. So you need the edge of a table and it kind of marks where they need to be snapped but it always worries me snapping boards <laughs> like that. Right, oh, that was easy, look, just put that. But just on the edge of the table like that and just like that. Like that, like that, like that. So they do snap quite easily. And then, uh, uh, you do wonder sometimes whether you're actually supposed to be snapping. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight boards here. First on the list is your resistors for assembling unit one. This is unit one there. So we're gonna start with the, the resistors. When they detail the list of resistors you used. They put the color codes on as well. So it's always good to reference that. One of the good things is they don't mix resistors in a bag, as far as I can see, but they're unlabeled. So you need to use your color code. What I do, the bits to the side that we don't need at the moment. First one on the list, 2K2, R19, obviously red, red. So here you go, here's all those. And as I'm building, I like to take them off. I'll go through. So you can see on the board that get, like this is the R19. There's a certain pitch between the holes, the solder holes. So you want to get your resistor kind of in the middle. Bend your leads out before you insert approximately what they are and just push them in. So this is straightforward process. So I'm going to now just populate the board of all the resistors.
So I'm gonna solder these in now. There's the iron. I'm using the Mundor 3.8% silver solder, silver gold. Brilliant stuff. So bomb around the board. So on number three, which is the FET. Uh, um, there is an orientation to them. So pop them through the hole and then pull them back. You can see that the actual top part is soldered onto the pad, that solder pad. So you basically press it down sort of there, quite straightforward. Right, now we're on to the laminated ceramic caps. These are blue, small things. They're not directional, so either way around. CHC9 is two yellow caps, which are these, I believe. So C7 and C8, there we go. These are also non-directional. And then ferrite beads. Ooh, this is a ferrite bead. FB1, FB2. And they've got PCB now. So this is directional. You can see there's a crescent moon at one end there, which correlates to the crescent moon there. And there you go, a bit fiddly. So I'm now going to start soldering. But what I'm going to do is, I don't like to put too much heat on an IC. So I'll just do one, two pins, and then move on to something else, and then come back. So I'll do a couple that's so steady in place. Okay, we'll do a couple somewhere else. A couple there. Go somewhere else. Cooked in that. Triode mini drive. Jack. So this doesn't have any pins per se. It's got a couple of holes here, which line up to the holes on the base. The solder tags don't go into a hole though. So fix it in place. Um, being IC2, which is that, that is directional, easily explained on the PCB. IC2, the DC jack, which is this, it's jack four. So that in, it might fall out. Speaker terminals. These oh, so they slip in there. I mean, look how great. That's so well engineered. Look, just pop it in there, and then you just solder. Boom, boom, boom. Put the fan on for this one. She can kick out a load. Inverter transformer. This there. It must be this one. Look 
can only go one way around. Brilliant. Sort of that in straight away. Now onto the cap, capacitors, electrolytics. So these are directional, you've got positive and negative electrolytics. But longer lead is a positive, pretty straightforward. The body of the component says what it is, what the value is. So C14, look. C22, what's that? 220s. C11, C12, C13, bum, 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 and 220, C15. Brilliant. Output transformers, which are these chaps. God, everything is going on this board. Can only go one way around. So fiddly to get in actually. Sort of that in. That is fully assembled now, ish. Obviously you've got two of these later. Instructions saying move on to unit two. Just before I sign off, I want to say a big thank you for watching our videos. Like and subscribe and follow us on all the social network platforms. See you later.